You ready for me to come up yet? Welcome to the second installment in Flexibility Month. The first episode we focus on lower body, so second episode we thought we'd focus on upper body. Today we're going to focus on a movement called, well as it was taught to us, Wulong Panda. It's good for the shoulders and whole upper body flexibility, including the thoracic mobility. have stiff shoulders and tense arms because if your arms are stiff it's going to be very difficult to move them quickly the way they need to move. Your shoulders need to be very relaxed and open so you can just whip your arm around as you need to. The second thing is you need to use your whole body as one piece and not just crank on your shoulder. So when you do the movement you're not just reaching back with your shoulder overextending and going outside kind of the range of your body, like disconnecting your arm from the rest of your body. Everything has to be together communicating. So there's a, a body rotation happening. To understand that part, you can practice this drill. You're just gonna rotate from side to side, first keeping your feet on the ground. So as you start the rotation and get it going more and more. It's going to feel like your feet want to come off the ground and twist with you, but you want to keep them glued to the ground. Okay? So there's like a torque happening. Then you can start lifting your heel up as you twist. And notice as I twist, I'm not just twisting and leaving my hips behind and disconnecting the upper half from my lower half. Everything's coming together. If this somewhere beneath my belly button is the center, like my gravity line, you can think of leading it from there, from the waist, not this. Because then you're stretching your lower back. You want to keep the lower back open and relaxed. So for that to happen, you need to twist the waist and let the back, just like I talked about in the transitional squats, needs to be like a prolongation of the back leg so the back stays open and the spine can maintain its natural curve. Now with the upper body, we can focus on just the front circle part. So you can start with your arms out and just practice drawing a circle and coming back to the start position. So you start with one arm, it drops down, keep the arm close to your body, it passes your other arm, goes overhead and comes back to the start position and you alternate. The next part is where it gets a bit trickier. So I like to teach it against a wall because it kind of forces you to rotate and keep the arm that's going back close to your body instead of letting it fly away from your body. Stand a foot or two away from the wall. Just circle, and when you get back to the start position, both arms go together now, like an airplane. They keep the same distance. So you make the circle, now both arms are going together, like an airplane, and you're twisting, just like we did that twisting drill in the beginning. When you get to here, you twist so that the arms can stay connected, like you're holding a giant ball. The arms stay connected, and come back. Other side, twist, arms stay connected, and come back. So you're getting some rotation through the whole spine. Your whole thoracic area, your rib cage, needs to stay relaxed, and you're opening it up. It's a very natural connected movement. So as you come around, you rotate, and come back. Remember, it's like you're holding a giant ball. So you do the first circle, now you're holding a huge beach ball, bringing it around and back. If you have really flexible shoulders, you can get closer to the wall and get more of a shoulder kind of stretch, but I don't like to use the word stretch because I don't want you to think you're stretching the shoulder. You're just, the whole body is stretching as a unity to open up. fluid and just increase the speed 
with which you do it. And when you really start increasing the speed, you could let the momentum of the trailing arm come down and slap your leg somewhere in your mid thigh area, just where it naturally falls. Okay, so instead of coming and putting the brakes on here, you can come around. Okay, and notice how when I do that, my hip is going like that because you have to rotate to keep the back in prolongation of the back leg. I don't want to go like this and crank my lower back and put stress on it. When I come around, it's going boom, and when I come back, snapping back. Okay, and try to find the rhythm of it. So it's kind of like you're winding up, and then fast. Wind up, and fast. It's not all one speed. Wind up, Enjoy.